hi and welcome to another part of this series where we've been building an e-commerce website with Django. If you'd like to follow along, just go to our Django e-commerce GitHub repository. The link is in the description of this video and you can just clone or download this to follow along. Now, before getting started, I just want to point out that we are not going to be teaching how to store credit card information ourselves. That's not secure and it's not a good way to do it. We're rather going to be using Stripe to store that information as they are the payment processor and that's what they're built to do. So this tutorial is going to focus on retrieving that information from Stripe and not storing it ourselves. Okay, so in this one, we're going to be adding functionality that allows a user to similar to the last video where you could use a default billing address. Now we're allowing you to have a default payment method, particularly with Stripe. So basically a default card that you can use in the rest of your purchases. So you don't have to keep on adding that card number every time you want to make a payment. You can just select that card. And we've already gone and implemented this functionality. So the format of this video is going to be a little bit different in that we're not going to be building it in this video, rather just walking through the functionality that has been added already. And this is just because it's not actually a lot of code and it's not a lot of functionality. The concept is pretty much the exact same as in the previous video where we were just allowing a user to click a checkbox, which would then basically show the user what they're allowed to see in the form, which would either be entering a new billing address or selecting the current one that they have. It's the exact same concept as that. So if you haven't watched the previous video, then I suggest Rather go ahead and watch that video as that video contains basically the logic that was used to fill in this functionality in this video. But basically the concept is that if I add something to cart and just proceed to checkout, then let's just use a default billing address and default shipping address, select Stripe. And the idea is basically that we have this checkbox here that I can select and it says use default card. And then we have the first 12 digits that are just stars because we don't know what they are. And then it gives you an indication of what that card is. So the last four digits and then the expiration date. And basically like this, you can either select to use this default card and pay with this because this is linked to your profile. Or you can go and add a new card over here as usual. And you can either save this for future purposes or not. So. It's the exact same concept as the previous video and let's just go and walk through the code that was added to do this. So we'll start off in our models and basically for us to show the user any card that they have used before in a purchase, that would mean that we have to store some of that information somehow. So what we've done is added a user profile model, which is basically linked to a user with a one to one field. So every user has their own user profile and we use the post save signal to create that user profile the moment that the user is created. So we just specify the sender as that auth user model and we say if that instance, so the user, if the user is created, then we just call userprofile.objects.create and just pass in the user as the only required argument, which basically creates that user's user profile. And by default, you're not going to have a Stripe customer ID and you're not going to have one click purchasing activated. This one click purchasing is more of a concept than actual functionality right now. So that's something that we could add in future videos. But basically you have these two fields as kind of like settings on the user and they can then go and configure this later on. So the Stripe customer ID will get populated if they decide to save their customer information when they check out. And that being if they were to say save for future purchases and enter that card information here, then we need to store that information. So what we do is here in the view, we'll just go all the way to the top of this payment view. So let's just look at the post method first. Basically what's happening is we're now receiving the token and some extra information from the form, which is firstly this save value, which is basically whether or not we should save the current card that the user just inputted into the form. And then use default means use the default card. So that's the only information we're getting from our post request. If we are saving it, then all we do is assign it to the user. So we first check if there is a Stripe customer ID associated on that user profile. 
if there isn't one, then that means that this is the first time they're saving information. So what we do is we create the Stripe customer and we pass in the source as the card that they just put in and just create that user profile where we're assigning the Stripe customer ID as the ID of this API call over here. And then we can also just set one click purchasing equal to true for future references, save the user profile. And otherwise, if the user profile does exist already, then all we're doing is creating a source. So you can call stripe.customer.createSource, which only takes in the customer ID and the source. So that'll basically add a new source onto the customer. And that's all the functionality there is for whether or not we want to save information. Then we go on to actually processing the charge. So if we're using the default card on the user's profile, then we simply just have to pass in the customer into the stripe.charge.create API call. Whereas if we're not using the default card, then we have to pass in the source that we want to charge. And basically you could view this as one is for users that have kind of like a profile and one is for users that are making sort of like an anonymous purchase. So for one, you're basically allowing us to retrieve your past credit card information and the other you're not. So you have to enter that every single time. And that's the only change that's been made in charging the user. Basically just one of these two methods has to occur. And everything after that is exactly the same. We create the payment and perform the rest of the billing logic here. But this is just for the post method. If we take a look here at the get method, here what we're doing is we're grabbing the user profile and we're checking if one click purchasing is activated. And if it is, then what we do is we fetch the user's cards, which is listed on their Stripe customer. So all we do is just call stripe.customer.listSources. And then here you just pass in the arguments, which are the Stripe customer ID, the limit of how many results you want to get back, which is set to three. And then the type of object that you want to filter for, because you get many different sources that Stripe actually handles. So we're only looking for cards as the specific object. So we just pass an object as card and now we'll have a list of cards which we can either iterate through or we can just grab the first one which is what we're doing here. So we're checking if the list of that cards is greater than zero then we just update the context to have a card and then that card we output here in our HTML by just using some template syntax here. So we just say if there's a card we output just another div which has a checkbox in it and inside it here, you can see we're outputting, for example, the last four, which are the last four digits on the card, the expiration month, the expiration year. So we output all of that if there is a card. And then we've just restructured the template similar to in the last video where now we just added some JavaScript down here that based on the input that is a checkbox, if you do select it, then it will hide the one form and show the other form and vice versa. So basically what we can do is we can log out and we will sign up with a new user. Okay, cool. We can now go and add something to the cart, proceed to checkout, and let's just enter some information, select Stripe, continue to checkout. There we go. Now we can see that we aren't getting that checkbox because we don't have any cards at the moment. And let's go and open up an incognito window just so we can go into the admin. We can go to user profiles, go to that new user, and there we go. So no Stripe custom ID and one click purchasing, not active yet. Now let's just go back here. And what I'll do is input some credit card information, click save for future purchases and click submit. Cool. And so now the order was successful. And if we check the admin, the customer ID is now there. One click purchasing is now there. So if we try and add something again, and let's just go use default and select Stripe, continue to check out. And now we have the option to use the default card. So we can select that, submit the payment and order was successful. And so that's all we wanted to show in this video, which was basically just taking the same logic from the previous video of how you can save a default address in the same way by storing a default payment method, which in this case is in the form of a credit card. And the best thing about it is that we aren't actually storing that information ourselves. We're always fetching that from Stripe, which makes it much better. So if you enjoyed this video, then 
Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.